hello students here i am radhi kumar assistant professor bhima so i am back in continuation of online lecture series on encompass so let's start this lecture see in last lecture we talked about residential status what is residential status a person on which we are going to levy the tax we divide that tax first we have to check that the uh, whether he is resident or non resident it means first we have to check whether the city is a uh, resident or not resident so we have to check the uh, his residential status to check residential status we have two basic conditions and two additional conditions okay what is basic and additional conditions mean first basic condition is that if a person live in india for 182 days or more during the relevant period here and what is second basic condition if a person stay in india for 365 in last 4 years this stated in the relevant period here and he must live in india for 60 days or more during the relevant period here. so these are the two basic condition and if a person fulfill at least one basic condition a person have to fulfill one basic condition to become a resident if a person fulfill one basic condition then it will be considered as resident any of the one basic condition okay and if a person does not fill any basic condition that means none of the basic condition it will be considered as non resident okay if a person is determined resident then further we have to check if he, uh, whether he is ordinary resident or not ordinary resident to check the ordinary status or not ordinary status we have to check additional condition so we have two additional condition what is the additional condition fourth additional condition is if a person lives in india at least two years out of last uh, out of 10 previous year just preceding just preceding the relevant previous year so if if a person lived in india for two years in last 10 year then it will be considered as uh, he fulfilled the first additional condition and if a person lives at least 7 30 days during the last 7 years just preceding the relevant period here so these are the two additional condition if a person fulfill both the additional condition he will be considered as ordinary resident and ordinary resident and he fulfill one additional condition or none of the additional condition he will be considered as not ordinary resident okay so there are some important notes for residential status if a person stay for 24 hours in india then that 24 hours will be considered as a one day if a person stay in india for 24 hours then that 24 hours will be considered as one day and however in absence of any data both the days of leaving in india and arriving in india shall be considered as stay in india so if there is no clear information then uh, if a person leaving in india then uh, day of leave and day of arrival will also be considered as stay in india okay so both the days are considered as stay in india in the absence of any clear information okay now there are some exception of uh, second basic condition okay that means in following cases only first basic condition will be applicable second basic condition will not be applicable so what are the exception of second basic condition Okay. Uh, a what first exception is an Indian citizen who leaves India in previous year as a member of crew of in Indian ship for the purpose of employment outside India. If an Indian citizen who leaves the India as a member of crew, then in that case, that person will be considered as residential citizen on the basis of only. Fourth basic condition. So on these kind of person, second basic condition will not be applied. Okay. What is the second exception? An Indian citizen or a person of Indian origin who comes to India in a previous year on a visit that is not for permanent stay in India. If a person of Indian origin comes to India for visit only, not for permanent stay, then they, that case also second basic condition will not be applicable. Only one basic condition, four basic condition will be applicable. Okay, and what will uh, visit include? Visit include both the visit, personal visit or business visit. It 
may be personal visit or it may be business visit. Both the visits will be included. Okay. Now, what is what do we mean by person of Indian origin? A person is deemed to be India uh, be of Indian origin if he either or uh, he either of his parents or any of his grandparents, maternal or paternal, was born in individual individual India. Okay. So see if a person's parents or his grandparents, whether uh, maternal or paternal, born in individual India, born in India before the independence of India. Okay. In that case, that person will be considered as or uh, Indian or person of Indian origin. Okay. So in these two conditions, in these two conditions. Only one basic condition. First basic condition will be applicable. Second condition will not be applicable. Okay. Now, here we talk about tax. Okay. So, see, there are some income will be taxable in the handbook or only ordinary residents. Some will be only in uh, not ordinary residents, and some will be only uh, non residents. Okay. So there are some situations. So for, what is the first situation? If any income received or deemed to receive in India, if any income received in India, then such income will be taxable in the hands of ordinary resident also, not ordinary resident also, and, and then uh, not resident. Okay. And if any income accrue or arises in the India, only arises in India, in India, not received in India. Then in that case, this income will be taxable in the in the hand of ordinary resident, uh, resident also, not ordinary resident also, and in hands of non-resident also. Okay, if any income arises in India, or or to be arises outside India, or for receive India, any income which is arises outside India, for received in India, in that case also. This income will be taxable in ordinary residents hands also, not ordinary hands also, or not uh, not resident hands. Okay. Now next situation: income accrue or arise or deemed to accrue or arise arise outside India and first received outside India. If any income which is arises outside India and first received in outside India also, then in that case. In ordinary resident residential hands will be taxable, not in the hand of ordinary uh, not ordinary residents and not residents. So this income will be taxable in the hands of only ordinary residents, not in not ordinary resident and not in non resident. Okay. Then what is the last condition? Or last condition says income accrue or arises or deemed to be arises outside India from business and profession controlled by India. If any income arises outside India, but the control of the business is in India. So in that case, this income will be taxable in the hands of ordinary residents, will be taxable in the hands of not ordinary residents, but will not be taxable in the hands of non-residents. Okay. So these are the three categories of person, ordinary resident, not ordinary resident, and not resident. And these are the situations. Where we will take in the hands of uh, in the different okay. yes now there are some incomes on which no tax is chargeable so these are some incomes on which tax is exempt there uh, no tax will be charged on following these incomes so first income is agriculture income on agriculture income there is no tax will be charged so agriculture income is exempted from tax. What is the second income which is exempt from tax? Amount received by a member of HUF, Hindu undivided family, from income of HUF, or in the case of impartible state out of income, income of family state. Yes. Okay. Uh, see, uh, if a person, if a person member of HUF, then in that case his income or particular member's income. Will not be taxable. This income will be exempt from tax. If a person earns some income from HUF, then 
uh, that particular member's income will not be taxable. This income will be. What is the next condition? Next condition says share of profit received by partner from a firm. Yes, if a partner receives the share of profit from a firm, then uh, his profit will not be taxable. His profit will be exempted from tax. Certain interest to non-resident. If following interest is received by non-resident, then that income will also be tax. That income will also be tax. What is uh, what is B income? Income by way of interest on certain notification, notified securities or bonds of a non-resident is income tax. If any non-resident receives uh, any interest amount on notified securities or bonds, then that interest income will not be taxable. In case of individual, any income by way of interest of any money pending to its credit in a non-resident account. In any bank in India, accordance with the FEMA Act 1999. So, according to FEMA Act 1999, if a person deposits some uh, amount in Bank of India, in any bank in India, then in that case, interest from that account will not be considered as tax. So, that interest will be tax. Okay. And interest on notified savings certificate. If you invest in some notified savings certificate, then if a person if a person receives interest on that, then that interest will not be is taxable. That interest would be exempt from tax. Okay. Interest on rupee denomination bonds. If any interest received on rupee den denomination bonds, if issued outside India during a period of 17 April 2018 to 2000. Received by a non-resident. Yes, if a non-resident who invests in rupee dominate dominate bonds, which is issued outside India during the period 2018-19, then such interest will also be tax free and will be exempt from tax. Okay. And next, leave travel concession is also free of tax. Exempt from tax. Leave travel concession we can study in further also in detail. And what is uh, next condition? Salary of a foreign employee and non non resident member of crew. If a foreign employee or a non resident member of crew receive any salary from India, then in that case also that salary will be tax will be exempted from tax. Remuneration of foreign trainee. If a foreign trainee receives any remuneration from India, then in that case also the income of that foreign trainee uh, will be exempt from tax. Tax paid on behalf of foreign company deriving income by way of royalty or fees for technical services. If any foreign company receives any royalty for his technical services, royalty fees for his technical services from India. Then in that case also these uh, royalty fees will be exempt from tax. No tax will be charged on royalty. Next, technical fees received by notified foreign company. If any notified foreign company is giving their services in India, technical services in India, and receive some technical fees, then in that case also technical fees will not be taxable. That technical fees will be exempt from tax. Next. Royalty or fees received by non resident from National Technical Research Organization. If any uh, royalty fees received by non resident who is the member of National Technical Research Organization, then in that case also that royalty or fees will not be taxable. Okay, that will be exempt from tax. Now, next, allowance purchased to government employee outside the India. If any government employee receive any allowances and purchases outside of India, then in that case also these allowances and purchases will not be taxable and will be exempt from tax. If any allowances or purchases received uh, outside India by any Indian citizen, then in that case also allowances and purchases will not be taxable in the hands of that person. That means these allowances and purchases will be exempted from tax. Exemption for compensation received or receivable on the account of any disaster. If a person receives any compensation, the compensation due to an accident or, uh, or any disaster, 
then they in that case these compositions will not be text but these compositions will be exempt from text text on non monetary purposes paid by employee like pf ppf set up by central government if central government set up any uh, provident fund any public provident fund and then central government fund. in that fund if an employer give you facility non monetary facility then that these the non monetary facility will also be tax that means they will be exempt from tax if a person receive any educational scholarship then in that case that educational scholarship will also be tax free and exempt from tax daily allowances of member of parliament if any member of parliament receive any daily allowance daily allowance then these daily allowances will be tax free and will not be taxable and exempt from so these are the incomes that are exempt from tax so these all about your chapter about uh, tax incidents about your income exemption from tax and about your residential status now we will continue our uh, salary chapter in next lecture series so that's it for today thank you guys